Bruchem Aboyim. Thank you for coming. We are now in our series of uh, Gematria. We are on uh, lesson number seven. We're going to do the fifth letter, which is uh, Hey. Again, the fifth letter. So the letter Hey, hey is the fifth letter in the Hebrew alphabet. It has a numerical value of five. Now, according to the Gemara in Menachos, it states that God used the letter Yud and then also the letter He, which forms a divine name. Again, it's not pronounced as it is, but Ka, He and Yud, Yud and He, pardon me, to create the universe. With the letter Yud, He created the world to come, the upper world, and with the letter He, He created this world. Many times we find that God's name is referred to with just the letter He as an abbreviation. We find the number five used in many places in Torah and connected to many facets of creation. In Bereshit, in chapter 2, uh, verse number 4, the Torah writes, Eilatoldo Shemayim Vahorez Vihi Baram, that these are the products of heaven and earth when they were created. Now the Hebrew word Bihi Baram, when they were created, can be divided into two words. Behe Baram, he created them with the letter He. Now, Avram Avinu, Abraham, our father, was the first person to recognize God as the creator of the universe and to actively spread monotheism in the world. He was created, rewarded by God by adding a hey to his original name, Avram. And this gave him the new name, Avraham, meaning the prince of a multitude of nations. So, Behi Baram can also be uh, read to mean that heaven and earth were created in the merit of Avraham. And this is, again, another way of seeing it. Now, we know that the Torah was given, <clears throat> excuse me, on Mount Sinai, Har Sinai, but that is only one of the five names that the Torah uses for this mountain. It is also referred to as Har Halokim, the mountain of God, Har Bashan, the mountain of Edible, Har Givgavnunim, the mount of unblemished cheese, Har Chorev, and the mountain of destruction, and also Har Sinai, the mountain of hatred. So we mentioned last week about the number four in connection with the four expressions of emancipation for the, for the Jews in Egypt and that they are connected to the four cups of wine that we drink at the Seder. However, the final level of redemption culminates in the fifth and final stage, the Evasius Chemalorets, and I will bring you into the land, again alluding to the land of Israel which is represented by the fifth cup of wine, referred to as Ko Shel Eliyahu, the cup of Elijah. And the reason being that he will be the one to herald in the Messianic era. Again, it's customary not to drink from it because it has not yet been fulfilled. So different customs as to what to do with it. Now the Medrash describes the soul as being composed of five components. And they are the Nefesh, Ruach, Neshama, Chaya, and Yechidia. Now, Nefesh is the lowest soul and relates to behavior and action. <coughs> Excuse me. Ruach, the spirit, to the emotions. Neshama, the third part of the soul, the inner soul, to the mind. Again, these three parts of the soul reside within a person. There are two that reside above a person, almost like a halo. That's Chaya, the living one, to the bridge between the first flash of conscious insight and its superconscious origin, and Yechida, the single one, the ultimate unity of the, of, with the soul in God, as manifest by pure faith, absolute devotion, and the continual readiness to sacrifice one's life for God. In Tehillim, in Psalms 103 and 104, King David repeats the phrase, Borchi nafshi es Hashem, my soul bless God, five times. These five times correspond to the drawing down and implanting the consciousness of divinity into the five levels of the soul. It's interesting, the numerical value of Borchi Nafshi Es Hashem is 1,099, which is exactly the same numerical value of the sum of the five names of the soul that I just mentioned. There are also five senses in the human body. There's a sense of hearing, seeing, touching, tasting, and smelling. And again, four is connected to five. Um, in that Adam, first man, tainted four of these senses when he ate from the tree of knowledge. 
But the one scent, the one, the one thing that he didn't taint, he did not smell the fruit. And therefore the sense of smell remained pristine. This may be why when God created man, it says, that he blew into his nostrils the breath of life. And the Zohar states that sanctity enters the body through one's nose. In fact, the nose is shaped, if you look at it, as an upside-down shin. Now, the numerical value of God's name of mercy, what we call the yud kei ke, God's name of mercy, has a numerical value of 26. And in the Atbash, where we exchange the first 11 letters of the Hebrew alphabet with the last 11 letters, the ineffable name of God, this yud kei vav ke, of 26, now has a value of 300, the numerical value of the letter shin. In addition, a sacrifice is referred to as a reach nichoach l'ashem, a sweet savor to God. No other sense of man is mentioned. Even at the end of Shabbat, when our neshama yaseira, the extra soul that we receive for the Shabbat, leaves our body, we smell, we smell spices as a way of reviving our godly soul after the loss of the special soul that we were privy to for the Shabbat. Now the hay symbolizes God's readiness to forgive penitence. God gives sinners the opportunity to return to him through the act of tshuva, through repentance. And that is why the left leg of the hay is not attached to the letter's roof. A small opening is left near the top, symbolizing that there is always space, that there is space that always remains open to which a repentant sinner can always return to God. Symbolized, again, by that letter hey. In fact, the word tshuva can be bred in two parts. Toshuv, hey, return to God. Kabbalistically, the hey refers to a degree of repentance represented by the hey of God's four-letter name based on a b'nei yisachar. Tshuva is so great that God adorned the letter hey with a tag, a crownlet, saying, if the sinner returns, I will bestow a crown upon him. Again, based on the Gemara and Menachos. Everything is contained, as we know, within the five books of the Torah, which is the cornerstone of Jewish life and Torah study. Everything that we do and study can be traced back to these five books. In fact, the Medrash says that when God created the world, he looked into the Torah as a blueprint to create it. We also traditionally start to teach a child the written Torah at the age of five. Moshe Rabbeinu gave us the five books of Torah, and Davin Amalek, King David, gave us the five books of Tehillim, Psalms. In the portion of Balak, it states, Heim am Labado yishachin, they are one nation that dwells alone. A highly significant feature of five is that it doubles up on itself to form ten which depicts a completely integrated whole. No other number has this feature. For example, 1 and 9 is 10. 2 and 8 is 10. But no number by itself. It's only 5, which is followed by itself. There were 10 plagues that were brought upon the Egyptians in Egypt. And they were divided into two sets of five. The first five plagues relate to the lower realms, and they therefore were of a lower intensity. Here, Pharaoh, Pharaoh, chose to harden his own heart. But he could not have naturally withstood the higher intensity of the later five plagues, which related to the upper realm. Therefore, for the last five plagues, it was necessary for God to harden Paro's heart by, in order for him to be able to not let the Jews go yet. On Yom Kippur, we call the holiest day of the year, the number five plays a prominent role. There are five bodily afflictions that we must adhere to, and they are abstention from eating or drinking, washing of the body, anointing of the body, wearing leather shoes, and marital relations. Symbolically, these five restrictions release the five components of man's soul from the shackles of his body. The high priest would immerse himself in the mikvah five times and change his clothing five times. And the term nefesh, soul, is mentioned five times in biblical passages regarding Yom Kippur. There are also five prayers that we recite during the course of the day. 
They are Mariv, the evening prayer, Shachrit, the morning prayer, Musaf, the additional prayer, Mincha, the afternoon prayer, and Nila, the closing prayer of the um, Yom Kippur of the night. The soft sounding letter He indicates feminine form of a noun. The Torah uses just one letter He to illustrate the distinct characteristics of woman. Femininity, chastity, and gentleness. The Ten Commandments were engraved upon two t tablets of stone, Luchot Avonim, five on each. The laws between man and God are considered more spiritually elevated than those between man and his fellow man, the latter being more earthly since they deal with issues that exist between people. This division into higher and lower commandments finds similar expression within the human anatomy. There are five essential organs, two eyes, two ears, and a tongue in the upper part of the body, versus five organs, two hands, two feet, and the male organ in the lower part. Now each hand has five fingers. They are made up of 14 digits, which corresponds to the letter He, which is made up of two letters, a Dalid and a Yud. The gematria of Dalit is four and Yud is 10, again equaling 14, of like the 14 digits in the hand. There are 27 bones in a human hand, and all of these numbers connect to the Torah. There are 613 commandments. They are broken up into 365 negative commandments and 248 positive commandments. If you add 3, 6, and 5 together, it equals 14. If you add 2, 4, 8 together, again, equals 14, alluding to a person's right and left hand. The right hand symbolizes chesed, kindness, and the left hand symbolizes gevura, severity. Together, 14 and 14 equal 28, the numerical value of the word koach, strength. When two people greet each other, it's customary that they shake hands. We always shake with our right hand as an expression of what we call avat yisro, loving a fellow Jew. Also, when we check a person's heartbeat, we check his pulse through his hand, which connects to his heart. Two individuals have the strength and the ability to overcome the powers of evil, since it is from the Torah given to us from God that we receive our strength. 27 bones in each hand equal 2 and 2, 2 times 27 is 54. The number of sedras in the Torah. 54 is a numerical value of the word dan, meaning judgment. The Torah teaches us how to be moral and fair in all of our interpersonal relationships. The three lines which compose the form of the hay correspond to the three garments of the soul, which are thought, speech, and action. The upper horizontal line alludes to thought, the right vertical line to speech, and the unattached foot to action. The horizontal and vertical lines of thought and speech are connected, since achieving them is relatively easy. But the unattached foot of action is much more difficult to attain, which is why we need the, what we call si'ata dishmaya, the help of heaven to succeed. As we say every day in our morning prayers, from the verse in Mishle, Rabos machashavot levish, adas Hashem hisokum, that there are many thoughts in the heart of man, yet the advice of God shall surely stand. So the world was created with the fifth letter of the Hebrew alphabet, He. And Justice 5 is only the halfway point to the completion within the number 10. This world is similarly only half of the story, a temporary life in this natural world. The world of Oldham Hazah, this world finds its perfect parallel and its full completion in Olam Haba, the world to come, created with the, with the tenth letter of the Hebrew alphabet, the Yud. The world to come is dependent upon what man accomplishes here in this world, with the koach, with the strength and direction of Torah. This will allow him to be meritorious on his day of judgment and to receive the reward that he is destined to inherit. May God bless us all that it is for good. Have a great Shabbat. Thank you for coming, and God bless.